Hey everybody, it's Galmadex, and welcome back to some more Magic Arena, and today we're going to be playing another premiere draft of Ravnica Chaos. So this is one pack of Murders at Karlov Manor, followed by a pack of Ravnica Allegiance and Guilds of Ravnica. Without further ado, let's get into our pack one pick one. Very solid rare here, the Homicide Investigator's great value no matter what, because even if it itself dies, you will be getting a clue token off of it, so you'll be getting at least two for one. And obviously, if any of your other creatures are dying, you can get even more card draw out of those clue tokens. So decent place to start. But seeing as this is three multicolored sets in a row, three Ravnica sets, so to speak, you could also just start with like Escape Tunnel or Public Thoroughfare or Topiary Panther. For fixing, I'd certainly take the Escape Tunnel and the Panther over the Thoroughfare, though, just because it is uh, a double tap land, which can be a little difficult. Although I have found the Chaos Drafts, to definitely be a bit slower, where you have more time to play really slow lands like double tap lands like Thoroughfare. So I think that'd be decent too. For pick two, we don't see anything super powerful here. There is one really efficient removal spell if we want to take Galvanize and head into Rakdos for now. But we could also, once again, just take some fixing like Thoroughfare or Topiary Panther. Yes, I will just stick with the raw power level here for now. Grab that Galvanize. Excellent cheap removal. Works pretty great with our clue tokens we might be able to get with the Homicide Investigator as well. Being able to up this to 5 damage. For pick 3, one of the stronger cards in the pack is Red, a person of interest, to keep us down that route alongside our Galvanize. Just two bodies off one card is always nice. That's a pretty efficient way to get a lot of stuff on board. Pick four, there's excellent Rakdos removal with Deadly Complication. Alternatively, we could take Extract the Confession because if something happens and we're pushed off of red but we're still on black, this will still be playable for us. Could also even just take like a blue-red dual land speculating on moving into uh, blue for our third color. You do tend to want to be at least two colors splashing a third in these Chaos Drafts because there are only five two-color pairs in the second and third pack. So if you start in a two-color pair pack one, you aren't necessarily going to get cards in that two-color pair out of pack two or pack three. So for us, since we're starting in Rakdos, which is red-black, Rakdos, the black-red color pair, is going to be in Ravnica Allegiance, but it's not going to be in Guilds of Ravnica. So in pack three, if we want some multicolored spells, we're going to need to splash some in. For pick 5, there's a killer among us pretty late. This is just a lot of stats for that mana cost. Really excellent card. This could find our splash for us. We go black, red, splash, green. As our three color pair, go for some Jund nonsense. Yeah, I will take a killer among us here. Pick 6, <laughs> we got a possibility storm from the list, which is kind of hilarious, um, but not exactly playable in draft it's just way too random it's a very fun card though really nothing all that playable in draft here the expedited inheritance is a double-edged sword both of you get the benefit from this card so don't really want to cast that when you're giving your opponent just as much value yeah not a great pack because tin street gossip is just not actually gonna do anything in uh in chaos because there's only one pack where we can play face down cards or flip them up and we have none yet so i think i just take another black or red card we'll grab presumed dead which works great with enter the battlefield or death triggers so it does work well with our person of interest and it works well with our homicide investigator for pick seven highly doubt we'll get enough artifacts to go with the cornered crook but we do have a tiny bit of clue tokens so far I mean, yeah, it's the strongest thing on color. Pick 8 now, Sanitation Automaton. It's pretty solid because it can fit into any deck no matter where your colors end up being. And there's not too much left in the pack. Pick 9, we'll take a Crawl Whipcracker since we are potentially uh, playing green and black. Although I'm not sure how many tokens there really are in Guilds of Ravnica and Ravnica Legion. Certainly less. Than there are in Murders at Karlov Manor, but probably enough that that's at least somewhat main deckable. I like Vengeful Creeper over the uh, the Hybrid Mana Flipper, even though 
if we don't play green, we can still play that hybrid mana flipper. The creeper just has a way better ability when it flips up, giving you a main deck naturalize, a way to blow up an artifact or enchantment. So for pack two, pick one, we can just take another good aggressive red card. Two mana for a 1-3, pings your opponent whenever they're activating abilities. And then it's got a very good mana sink. You could throw a bunch of mana at it to make it a big menacing threat. Card doesn't actually seem that crazy for a rare, but it seems fine. Biogenic upgrade's pretty cool if you have other ways to get plus and plus one counters on the board. And uh, Ravnica Allegiance... I think mainly just Ravnica Allegiance has a decent amount of ways to make plus and plus one counters. I don't know about Guilds of Ravnica. I don't remember a lot of plus and plus one counters there. Yeah, I mean, it's like plus six, plus six at minimum. It's it's interesting. I think I still just take Immolation Shaman. But it's not a horrible spell. Ooh, Gatebreaker Ram. Gatebreaker Ram, actually a potentially high pick here because the power level of your average common and uncommon in Guilds of Ravnica and Ravnica Allegiance is much lower than those in Murders at Karlov Manor. So you can afford to spend a lot of picks on Guild Gates, passing up on other cards. That said, there are other really powerful cards on color, like Blade Juggler here. 3 mana, 3, 2, draw a card, and lose a life when you play it. You just have to deal damage to your opponent to cast it for 3 mana. I do want to do Gatebreaker Ram nonsense at some point. I did one during the live stream, and it was awesome. We made this thing like a 6-6 six, six pretty consistently for 3. But here, I think the better option is just the Blade Juggler. Very solid value play. Pick three, another Blade Juggler. You love to see it. We definitely want to find some good one and two mana creatures to consistently get in for the Spectacle ability. We need to make sure we're dealing damage to our opponent in the early game, uh, particularly on turn three for these cards. But they are excellent value if you can do that. Pick four. Uh, we do have a Gruel Guild Gate here for helping uh, to be Jund. Got a Blade Brand as a fine combat trick. Territorial Boar and Feral Mocker, both pretty filler two drops. I do like Burning Tree Vandal a lot at three, um, but I think we need more two mana stuff over three mana stuff right now. Because if you take the spells out here and the splash stuff like Whipcracker, and that's still four two mana creatures. That's not horrific, actually. Yeah, I feel like Burning Tree Vandal is enough better. And the boar to take that over it, and we can take it over the guild gate here too, because we might not even necessarily need to splash green in the end. We probably will, but potentially not. Pick five, there's a get the point for great instant speed removal. It costs a lot of mana, but does blow up whatever you need to. Alternatively, we've got Rakdos guild gate, or just like a blade brand. I'm just going to take the great removal here. Pick six, another gate breaker ram. Dang, this would have been a sweet pod to be the Gatebreaker Ram deck. Could have had two of them. Rakdos Trumpeter is an excellent way to trigger Spectacle cards, and I have two really important three-mana Spectacle cards, though, so we're sticking to our pure Rakdos for the most part at this point. Might even just put all the green cards in a pile. be kind of nasty if we can go two-color. That does not happen often in these Chaos Drafts. This would be my first time so far, including all the live stream drafts. Alright, so here a Spear Spearer can trigger Spectacle on Blade Juggler, but I'm a pretty big fan of just attacking in with two drops to do that, so I am going to go ahead and grab a Gruel Guild Gate to help out with the green splash if we follow through with that. Pick 8. 2 mana 2-2. Two, two. This is a 3-mana 5-2 if you Spectacle. We're already trying really hard to Spectacle turn 3, so I guess I'll take the 3-mana 5-2. Ideally, we want to find some really good combat tricks to go with this, because this is going to get blocked by a 2-mana two 2-2 two and die. So, you can find excellent combat tricks to keep it around. That will help a lot. Uh, Dead Revels, 2-mana to return 2 creatures from grave to hand is pretty solid. Alternatively, there's an Erinx to splash in. I don't think that's quite strong enough to be coming in off the splash, but it is decent. I'll take a Dead Revels here, though. Pick 10. Well, there's another Dead Revels. There's also another Gatebreaker Ram. 
All right, well, at this point, if we wheel all the rams, I'll take them and then all the gates, but somebody is taking all the gates, it looks like. They are not coming back around. Uh, Deface is completely unplayable, so we'll just take a Wrecking Beast that is highly unlikely to make the cut. Just because that double green cost would be a difficult splash. Although, it is on a 7 drop. The odds of having two of your sources be green once you have seven lands total are much higher than like if it was a three mana card that required double green. Take an act of treason here. I'm not sure that's going to get run. Got to be super aggressive to one act of treason. We're looking decently so, but maybe not all the way. All right, just some more Rakdos nonsense to wrap up pack two. And let's see what we get in pack number three. We've got a Burglar Rat, which works excellently with our Presumed Dead. That way it can trade up into whatever they block and make our opponent discard another card. I like that combo a lot. Direct Current is our main other option here. Two removal spells on one, but both of them are really inefficient. Three mana for two damage at sorcery speed. Uh, the reason you can do it twice is because you can discard a card to recast it from your grave. It is a fine card, but I think Burglar Rat makes more sense here. And here is where we're not going to get any black, red, gold cards, but we can still get all the monocolored stuff, maybe. But since we are uh, having a backup plan of splashing green here, we can take some Golgari gold stuff if there's anything super powerful there. Pack 3, pick 2... Um, Iron Shell Beetle is okay with Presumed Dead. Oh wait, that's green though. <laughs> It'd be splashing in a two drop. Never mind. So there's really nothing for us then. There's a green card, green card, black card. That's just really bad. It's a Rampaging Monuments. Four mana, three, three trample. Gets bigger if you cast multicolored spells, which isn't going to happen that often. I mean, I guess four mana, three, three trample. It's not the worst thing in the universe. There's really no good splashable Golgari cards. They're all just pretty mediocre. So I guess we take the monument. Pack three, pick three. For red and black, we've got Wojak Bodyguard. This actually looks pretty sweet with the amount of two mana creatures that we have, because this attacks alongside them and puts a plus one plus one counter onto one of them. Which can really beef up your board. The big issue is if your opponent can deal with all your other creatures, then this card does literally nothing. But if it's got a buddy alongside it, it's a very good deal. And it's great with our four drop, two, two, twos to mentor up. And a wide board state. I'll take the Wojak bodyguard here. Uh, Disinformation campaign is a really sweet card, so I do want to mention that. Uh, but you do want a lot of surveil to go with it. Now we only have one right now. We'd have to go deep on the blue splash to get enough surveil to have that really pop off. Pick four, we've got a Torch Courier, a Child of Night, a Pitiless Gorgon. Don't have anything super powerful to splash in, throwing green in. Although Artful Takedown, throwing blue in is pretty good. It's like a removal spell and a tap all in one. Or Beacon Bolt throwing blue in, but I don't think we have quite enough instant sorceries to make this great. But it would be really good in a more controlling kind of Grixis deck. I think we just take the organ here. You know, maybe even the child just up that two drop count. Oh, another disinformation campaign. Such a cool card. Make your opponent discard a card and you draw a card every time you surveil. That thing does just pop off. So nothing good in Rakdos here, it's just like a disinformation campaign splash, or pick up a guild gate in case of a splash. Hypothesis will splash. The on-color stuff is a barging sergeant, a dowser of lights, and a barrier of bones. I guess dowser of lights is just straight beef, so it's mildly interesting, but I'll just take a guild gate. Seems like a bit of a miss for us. Pick six, Cosmotronic Wave is not the worst way to end a game. If you have enough power on board, you just shut off your opponent's blocks and kill them. If they're at like 10 life and you have 10 power creatures on board, then uh, boom. Game's over. Another Cosmotronic Wave. I don't think I want 
too many copies of that though. And I do like severed strands when you have cheap little enter the battlefield effect creatures like Burglar Rat, Sanitation Automaton. Fine cards to sacrifice to this to make it decent removal. Take the severed strands. Now we've got a dead weight for great removal. Just kill a cheap creature for just one mana. Nobody's in Selesnia. Sad day for Amara because she is a great card. I guess we could just rare draft her because we're not splashing any of this. Pick 10, we get to rare draft a Thousand Year Storm. Really cool card to build around for blue-red spells decks. Obviously, it's in the name. You get to storm off and duplicate all your stuff. So that's a fun one for the collection. Dang. Wow, yeah, green, white, and blue-red were wide open. Slesnian is it here. All right, we could end up playing the Dowser of Lights again. It is just large for its mana cost. For the time. Not compared to what you can get in Murders at Karloff Manor, but compared to the other cards in Ravnica Legions and Guilds of Ravnica, it's not a bad common. Not a terrible common, at least. All right, so we are... 49 cards deep here. Probably gonna splash in a Killer Among Us and Vengeful Creeper, because this is a 5-mana card and a 6-mana flip, respectively, so we don't need the green source till super late. So we can pretty easily splash those in off of just one gate, one thoroughfare, one forest. I guess alternatively, because our curve is so aggressive and we have so many 2-drops, we could choose not to splash, not because it's difficult mana-wise to fit these in, but because it would involve playing some tap lands, which can... Uh, mess up our mana on curve. I think I'm still cool with the splash, though. I'll I'll go for it here with these two. So we have to cut six cards from here. Would I rather have a 5-4 with no abilities or a 4-5 with no abilities? I feel like the high toughness is pretty big. I guess I can run both, because these are actually three drops. Yeah, we just run both of those. Uh, definitely keeping dead rebels in. Active treason, maybe not so much. We've got one way to sack an opposing creature. Uh, Debtor transport, maybe not so much. Six mana card for a relatively aggressive deck here. What's the creature to non-creature looking like? 19 to 10. Still need to cut four more cards. Cut like two of each. Although Killer Among Us is another creature. A lot of mana to buff the shade, but do like how it helps curve out with the rest of everything. I think our weakest two drop is actually just Child of Night for the one toughness. I mean, Automaton has the one toughness as well, but the Surveil trigger is probably a little better than the Life Link. Four mana Rampaging Monuments, the worst. We've only got two multicolored cards in the deck. It's probably not a thing. Um, Acrobat doesn't look great either. Now we could cut the Acrobat. Yeah, there's still plenty of three mana stuff to do without it. For the last cut, we could drop the Dowser. Could drop the Crook, because we don't have many artifacts to sack. We could drop the Thirsting Shade. Just as a kind of filler one drop. Or we can get rid of one of our non-creatures here. Maybe Cosmotronic Wave. Maybe Severed Strands? Even without the Severed Strands now, I'll still have Deadweight, Galvanize, Complication, and get the point. Yeah, I'll cut the Severed Strands. We'll leave the Cosmotronic Wave for uh, for Oops, I Win moments, potentially. So, yeah, I think we will wrap it up. Call it a deck here. One last look at the mana base, though. 12 black cards, 10 red, 2 green. We're sitting at seven black sources, seven red sources, three green, and then one of everything. So I guess that's eight, eight, four. Eight, eight, four sounds about right. Honestly, that's pretty close. Twelve to ten. So we will roll with it. We'll go eight, eight, four and call it a deck there. All right, here's a look at our final deck list for today. We're on a pretty aggressive Rakdos deck with a nice little green splash for a big old killer among us. 
for a ton of stats off the one card. But generally, we've got a really aggressive curve of creatures. We've got a one drop and tons of two mana creatures so that we can consistently deal damage to our opponent on turn three to get excellent value off of cards like our double blade juggler. These require us to have dealt damage to our opponent to play them for only three mana. But if we can do that, we're getting a three mana three two that draws us a card and uh, just keeps keeps ahead in value. Make sure that we still have stuff to drop on the board and and really try to out aggro our opponent. We've got a great curve of creatures and plenty of removal to keep things out of the way. Galvanize, dead weight, deadly complication. We've got a presumed dead here to trade up and keep our creature on board. We've got get the point for really big removal, and we've even got a Cosmotronic Wave if the board state gets too cluttered, but we have lethal damage on board. We can just shut off all of the blocks for the turn, so it's like a very reasonable little Rakdos aggro deck, and I'm pretty excited to see how it does as we head into the gameplay. All right, here we are on the draw for game number one. This is a really slow hand. We don't start till turn three, and our turn three play can't attack or block either. I mean, we have like eight cards that are two men or less creatures in this deck, so we could draw into something that makes the hand function, but if we don't and our opponent starts moderately aggressively at all when they're on the play, we're going to die pretty fast, so I am going to take the mulligan here. This is much more reasonable. We will ditch... Eh, probably the Dowser. Use the Immolation Shaman as our beefy creature if we flood out here. And if we don't, then we'll have plenty of other creatures to play outside of the Dowser anyway. Devkarn Dissident starts things off. We will start with an Immolation Shaman that can block that until they have 5 mana to buff it up. Hazda Officer, which buffs the Dissident to let it attack past our 1-3 for the turn. Yeah, it's a very aggressive start. 2-drop into 3-drop on the play. Uh, if we get lucky, we get to Blade Juggler here, and if we don't get lucky, we have to just Galvanize an Officer. Alright, we get lucky. No blocks. Here's a Blade Juggler then. Nap trade with the officer, I think. We can just galvanize the dissident later. Oof. I was going to say, trading into almost any combat trick would be fine here, but if it's a combat trick that sticks around permanently, that's rough. And airtight alibi is a combat trick that sticks around permanently. So now we can double block the Dissident to force them to dump all their mana into buffing it, and then when they do, we galvanize it, then we untap, play a land, get the point to 5-4, and their board is gone. So that is the plan. Oh, if they try to cast a combat trick from their hand, this is going to go so much worse for them. Okay. I guess it, since it investigates, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, if they keep casting spells for murders at Karlov Manor, they're going to do well. Somewhat how the format feels. We've cast all cards from Guilds of Ravnica and Ravnica Allegiance, except for the Galvanize. So it feels like we're falling behind, but these two murders at Karlov Manor combat tricks have just popped off for our opponent. But here we go, we've balanced things out for the most part. They are at the mercy of their draws now. They had one card left in hand and a clue on board. It's a very good one. We have to destroy that immediately before it gets them a bunch of clues. That's kind of cute that Immolation Shaman works against, uh, against clue tokens. Nice little synergy for the Chaos format. All right, they are back to mostly playing off the top. And there's the Death Toucher for Immolation Shaman. 
I mean, I suppose it does give itself menace, so they still have to double block it later. For now, I think I need to play Burning Tree Vandal. Because that can trade into the Gorgon. And let me keep my Immolation Shaman around. Could haste did an attack. They crack back for two, but I'm at seven. They crack back, they've got no blockers up here. I think I'm gonna cash in the attack here. To ditch this swamp. Maybe ditch the mountain next turn too if we find another creature to cast to trade into the Gorgon on blocks. They have played enough combat tricks. I do need to moderately consider blocking if they send the Gorgon in, but I don't think I'm going to do it. Even if they like airtight alibi the Gorgon or something, we'll still be alive. Oh my god. Yeah, it's horrific because it's a vigilance too. Stop casting murders at Karloff Manor spells. <laughs> uh. This is plus three, plus three. So I guess now we have to just trade the Shaman into that on blocks next turn. <sighs> three life is, is very low. I will chump there. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Three mana up after using that. Pick up Blade Juggler, Burglar Rat are my options. And we just chump with Burglar Rat again for a turn. I think that's fine. See what that last card in their hand is. Ooh, it's a big combat trick. Plus one, plus three to everybody on tap them all. All right. There's the chump. Three mana up here. Or just hold all the mana for the Immolation Shaman trade. Seven. I kind of think I have to just hold all the mana for the Immolation Shaman trade. It's going to go miserably if they draw removal, though. All right. Immolation Shaman trades, and now we go ham. Hopefully. Oh, yeah, that's a sick draw. And I've got exactly the mana to play that and the Blade Juggler. Alright, pretty excellent turn. The Vandal gets to keep looting away these lands. Peacemaker, oh, that's pretty good here. Each player gains four. Their life total is definitely more relevant. Whoever's on the back foot cares a lot more about their life total generally. Um, Let's go full aggro. Let's lose one of our creatures to get more damage in here. Eight, nine. It's a lot of damage. They're down to five. We no longer have the discard engine, so we play the land so that I have the trumpeter mana up here if I want to just trade in a peacemaker on blocks. But there's the concession from our opponent. Pretty close game there. We got into a little bit of a top deck war and luckily hit a bit more card advantage stuff. Being able to have the Vandal looting a bit there, as well as the Blade Juggler and Dead Revels combo for a lot of card advantage was really nice. So, excellent stuff in the late game there, and we are now 1-0 heading into game 2. Right, here we are on the play for game 2. It's a very slow hand mana-wise because of the public thoroughfare, but as soon as we get that thoroughfare down, we actually get to start going 2 drops every turn, which is great. Um... I think I'm going to start with Thoroughfare rather than Swamp. 
Uh, so I can start with a three drop on turn three. Might even go bodyguard into uh, rioting out the Burning Tree Vandal with haste. Playing against red, black, white here. Mardu, so Boros and Rakdos and Orzhov together. Ah, oh, Death Toucher. It's a little annoying. I've got a Presumed Dead I could hold up, but I can't hold up Presumed Dead and haste out Vandal in the same turn. So I think we Trumpeter Burglar Rat for now and then go for Presumed Dead combo. I think that is reasonable. That does ruin the idea of attacking with Bodyguard this turn, though. If I had just played, uh, like, Burning Tree Vandal first or something, we could have attacked into the Grudian and, and been fine here. So, we have been slowed down for sure. Face down card. Okay. Shoot. Well, now if I want to Burning Tree Vandal and Presumed Dead, I don't get to discard a card this turn, because I'm not discarding a Blade Juggler. It is a May ability. It is probably worth the haste here. So just do it. We mentor up the burglar rat, so none of these blocks look free. Although, of any creature we would want to cast Presumed Dead on, it would probably be the burglar rat. Let's buff the trumpeter then. Ooh, one mana removal on the vandal, you got it. Well, this is going to go pretty well for us, I imagine. I don't think they wanted to lose their face down. They were just like, ooh, free block. Yeah, it was a dog walker. Get those dogs out of here. And we get to make them discard another card. They lose a macabre mockery. It's a makeshift binding on the trumpeter. They're down to a single card in hand, and we get to blade juggler here to get up in value. Nice little menacing rat to definitely trigger spectacle. Find a get the points for their next blocker they play. Rakdos Roustabout? Sure. Or Pilfering Imp. I could get the point to the Roustabout right now to scry before I draw. But I think I want to draw first to make sure that I don't draw into something that they can just imp away. That would ruin my day. Okay, it's just a land. So. Do I get the point aroused about? I mean, Burglar Rat wins this race really slowly. I think I'm going to get the point a stupid little roused about just so we win the race pretty handily on board. Plus we get to scry and Killer Among Us really wins the race. Definitely not playing the land because there is always a chance they'll try to pilfering imp and just sack the imp for nothing. That imp lets them look through our hand and make us discard a non-land. That was a horrifically good top deck for our opponent, just a casual 6-5 off the top. Here's our killer among us, we will go for the goblin as the killer. Goodbye, imp. Okay, land in hand means I think we just kill that to outrace. Just wipe their board. Because we know they don't have a trick here. If they didn't play their land for turn here, I might have just not blocked. Or just blocked with a 1-1. One, one.
but since we do get the perfect information and we know that the block's going to go through, I think it is worth getting the recluse off the board there. Okay, great draws. Great draws. There's a face down from our opponent. Probably not enough to save them at two life, but we will find out right now. And it is not. It is a shady informant to kill two of our creatures, but doesn't kill the second one until after they're already dead, technically, so. Good draws are good. That is going to be 2 and 0 oh to start off this event. All right, here we are on the play for game three. This is a pretty decent hand. Like, we don't really start till turn four because we can't actually spectacle the juggler down, but they are very valuable cards. Cosmotronic Wave is awkward in the opener, and we do really want to hit a one or two drop creature. I guess, yeah, the big problem here is even if we hit a one or two mana creature, we can't cast it because we need to play the thoroughfare, right? I have to go mountain and then turn two, I have to spend both my mana on thoroughfare. So I still won't be able to spectacle on turn three, no matter what I draw. So no matter what, this hand doesn't do anything till turn four. And it has a very late gameplay with the wave here. I actually will take the mulligan uh, for that reason. Okay, this is even worse. These are five mana plays. I mean, the mana is good, but... Yeah. I guess it is probably slightly better than starting the game down two cards. Do kind of wish I kept the first hand now. We'd be starting things one turn sooner. Never mind, it's the exact same, basically. There's the person of interest. There's a Vitugazi Inspector as a roadblock to start things off, of course. The Red Herring turn three, that is awkward, because it just runs right into the Inspector. Do I even cast that here? Because if they cast another creature, it's going to be forced into a really bad attack next turn. But if I cast it here, I can have it on board for the Cornered Crook, and then I can trade it up, potentially, on turn 5. It could blow up in my face, but I think we get it on board. I should have played it post-combat, technically, since it's not going to get damage in here anyway. But I think it's worth uh, putting it down here. Okay, yeah, trading into District Guide is... Not great, since that drew them a card, but it does something. Ooh. Never mind. Homicide Investigator means it is just great. Play that pre-combat, so if they do want to take the trade, we get the clue. Alright, so we will just bounce off each other. I can always just sack the Red Herring and get to draw a card and get a clue. And then I can use that clue for the Cornered Crook next turn. Well, I did not imagine this kind of synergy randomly popping off here, but it, it looks like it will be. We do need to hit a fifth land, so cracking the herring gets closer to that. I'm going to crack the herring. It's going to dig us closer to land five and give us the clue to use with the cornered crook if we find that uh, land, and we did. So now we can cornered crook away... The Inspector or the District Guide, or I could just cast Person of Interest and wait on the Crook. Until they might play something better. I kind of want to get a 5-4 down, though. Let's get some beef onto the board. Luminous Bonds on the Cornered Crook. Sadness, because it doesn't actually kill it, so we don't get the clue off the investigator. It's quite disappointing. Sanitation automaton here. So we can person of interest and we can surveil. Really don't want to have to get the point like a 1-3 again, after we just get the point at a 3-2 last game. So I think we're just waiting on this. Like, they have a lot of mana. So I can't imagine they won't be playing something big sometime soon. Yeah, there we go. That is massive. 
that turns into an 8-8 trample if they adapt it. Yep. Well, that is going to get the point here. I think that Zagana gets the point. Scry that land away. Cash in four damage here. If Arena wants to work, there we go. Buried in the garden. Excellent stuff. Exile the person of interest instead of the homicide investigator, though. It's not what I would have expected. Ooh, high alert to make Inspector a 3 3. Well, that makes sense. Dead weight makes it a 1 1. Which is still big enough to kill Automaton, but can't win them all. If it kills Automaton, we get a clue. I actually probably should have been attacking more aggressively earlier because of that. Uh, thanks to Homicide Investigator. I'll probably crack the clue first. I'll still have Bodyguard mana, and if we hit something better, we can do that. Like if we hit a Blade Juggler, Galvanize. Okay. It's a good card. I don't know if I would say a better one. Against an empty board. In a vacuum, Galvanize is definitely better. Hello? Alone and raise Forerunners is actually probably enough to kill us here. Because it's a 7-7 Trample Vigilance. I mean, I guess we could trade most of our board into it. Oh, this is kind of interesting. Because with Homicide Investigator, if any of our creatures die, we'll have a clue to draw a card. Which means I can crack the clue and galvanize for five. So whatever they block, I can kill four owners. And if they don't block, they're taking eight and then they hit me for seven. Then I hit them for eight again and they die. I think we actually send in because of Homicide Investigator. I guess if they kill my um, my token, that's the only way we don't kill four runners here. Because then I don't get a clue. But if they kill Investigator or the Bodyguard, I get a clue, I draw a card, I Galvanize. Ooh, and we find a Vengeful Creeper to blow up the uh, High Alert if we need to. Alright, well that was some spice. Once again, the MVP key cards always be in uh, Murders at Karloff Manor. The Investigator, the Galvanize, the Person of Interest, the key cards of the game here. Ooh, Burglar Rat. Let's get rid of that last card. Because they're dead on board. If they don't have a card in hand. Okay, seven damage. Do they have the mana to sack this? To drain me for four? One, two, three, four, five. They're one mana off from barely surviving there. All right, that is three and O oh from the Rakdos deck. Really lucky to consistently be hitting the uh, the homicide investigator value here, but really solid run no matter what from here. Going to be three and three at worst. That's a fifty fifty run. So we'll just take it as far as we can as we head into game four. All right, this hand's a little bit of a gamble, but I'm going to keep here because we're on the draw. We can surveil turn two, and if we hit any basic land by turn three, we can then start ditching some of these black spells to try to draw into the swamp. Not only that, but we can ditch the creatures first because we can just pick them up when we hit the black source with dead rebels. There's a lot of ways for this hand to get out of the mana situation it has in uh, in being monocolored. It's got automaton for surveil. It's got vandal for digging. It's got the Dead Rebels to pick up whatever we had to discard to dig with. I think this hand is better than it looks. So there's Barrier of Bones into Iron Shell Beetle. 
So 0, 3 into a 2, 2. And there is the swamp right on time. So I don't even have to do any nonsense. I'm going to start with Trumpeter, because it's the easiest way to trigger spectacle cards. I'm getting in with Menace here, so if they do attack us with like Iron Shell Beetle, um, and they don't have blocks anymore. Here, they do still have blocks, so... Vandal for a 3-2 so that it's big enough to attack into the barrier later. That seems reasonable. I need 4 mana to get Trumpeter to really pop off. Yeah. Next turn we could, like, Automaton plus Galvanize or something. I'm gonna sever its trans the Vandal, sack in the barrier bones. That was a pretty classic combo from uh from Guilds of Ravnica. Nope, they're just gonna straight up Assassin's Trophy. Alright, fair enough. I guess we get our uh our splash. Down to 17, and they don't have blocks for trumpeter. Drill bit. Ew. Make me discard Blade Juggler. Actually, probably make me discard Dead Revels is their best option. Galvanize. I mean, that is an option as well. I'm pretty happy with them taking that. We can just go to Absolute Value Town and just trade Blade Juggler off instead of using a Galvanize. Like, I think Blade Juggler type stuff is just like strictly better than Galvanize here, because the only thing Galvanize is really going to do is kill a 2-2 two, two, or a 3-1, right? Well, Blade Juggler is going to draw us a card and kill a 2-2 two, two, or a 3-1. So it's going to bring us ahead in card advantage here. Which could be excellent. Yeah, and now we are just full-on winning from this position, with Dead Revels really popping off. Get that Blade Juggler, the Vandal. Blade Juggler up next turn. Maybe should have not played the land, because I am going to have Vandal on board. But six mana still seems decent. Okay, there's Beastmaster with a counter on it. We can complication that if we need to, but I think our onboard attacks are already good enough. I think we actually discard Thirsting Shade here to Vandal. Um, that way I have the four mana to buff Trumpeter and the... Okay. The four to buff Trumpeter plus the three to play Blade Juggler post-combat. Off of Spectacle. Sweet. Find the Homicide Investigator? Well, that's nasty. Certainly not gonna uh, deadly complication of Barrier of Bones. Just go all in, just get the man investment out of the way on the red herring, even though it's not hasting in this turn. And there's the concession. I believe that is dead on board, right? 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and we just buff the Immolation Shaman, so it is indeed a little bit of flood from our opponent in the end, but a lot of excellent value from Blade Juggler and Dead Revels together. Kind of the dream team there, pulling us way ahead in card advantage in the end of that game. And we are now 4-0, heading into game number 5. Alright, here we are on the play for game number 5. We've got that Blade Juggler with no creatures in hand again, but this time, if we draw any 1 or 2 mana creatures, we can actually play them on curve. This is probably wrong to do, because Dead Revels and Cosmetronic Wave are both really late game plays. Probably a position we are definitely supposed to mulligan again, but... Um, I just had a really good time with Blade Juggler Dead Revels Dream Team, so I'm going to try to do it again. And we might lose for it, because we're not doing anything at this rate. We're drawing exclusively lands, so we don't get to do anything till turn 5. Actually, no, we do get the point. Or we're drawing, like, high mana value cards and lands. None of our cheap creatures is what I mean to say here. 
which gives our opponent all the time in the world to set up their mana in their very splashy deck. They've got lockets and guild gates galore, so they probably have more explosive endgame than us, and we would want to push the aggressive start a lot here. Yeah, if nothing else, they're going to have more card draw than us with double is it locket. It. It's a draw four setup for later. Well, here is the uh, hard cast blade juggler for five. Sphinx of New Prov. That requires. An additional two mana to target it, um, but I can galvanize it for four mana total and then still have two mana up for Rakdos Trumpeter, so that will be the play. And they could save it with like a combat trick of some kind if they have one, or a counterspell. Okay, full on counterspell, that's rough. The trade is still insanely good for us there, so we absolutely still send in. Oh god. There's bomb level flyers exclusively from our opponent here. Well, the 4-3 uh, flyer is a lot easier to attack into, and it doesn't set up their draws, so we're going to get the point, the 4-4. Four, four. Find a presumed dead? I think I need more removal over anything. Like, if one of my creatures dies, I don't really want a presumed dead. I just want a dead revels. I've already got a way to bring back. The one thing I do like about the presumed dead is that it gives, like, the buff here. But we currently don't need the buff. We've got a menace creature and a creature that's already big enough to uh, attack in the Sphinx anyway. Or trade into the Sphinx anyway. Dramatic accusation. Slow down the blade juggler. Now we are losing the race. Deadly complication. So there is our answer to the Sphinx. Let's go for it. Okay, pretty even life totals. They've got more cards in hand, but nothing on the board. Our hand is a dead hand, though. This dead revels in Cosmotronic Wave. Neither of these do anything. So they are definitely ahead in cards. They have, we have basically zero cards in hand. They have three in hand and two lockets to play around with. I don't feel favored here. Okay, now I do. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> With the red herring off the top to trigger Spectacle. To cast the Dead Rebels for even cheaper. Yep, they have just single-handedly made my Dead Rebels incredibly active, and I am so happy with that. That was so lucky. Of all the things they could have had to play that turn. Board wipe is just perfect for me. I got another counter spell. All right. Annoying, but we're still ahead. Oh, no. Does that kill things with a minus? Yep. All right. Well, we lose. We went from super ahead to just get rowled, nerd. I guess they don't have the mana, or they don't have the loyalty to minus twice in a row. That is the nice thing about the Ral. so if these can remain on board, we can kill Ral next turn with either one of them. So if they only have one removal spell, we're fine, but if they kill both these, or if they have, like, removal plus a creature, then we're not fine. Let's we'll see. They did not pick up Makeshift Binding, so their top two cards were Makeshift Binding and something better, which is horrific. I can't imagine Bring to Trial was what they chose over Makeshift Binding. So this last card is something to kill Trumpeter. And then we get really sad. I guess we uh, we find out here.
It's not. Maybe they took Bring to Trial over Makeshift Binding? Yep, and now the lockets pop off. Alright, we can... Dang it. I was going to say we can try to hit them for five twice in a row with Trumpeter by double buffing it. Two turns in a row. can no longer do that. Immolation Shaman is big. Like a 7-7 seven, seven Menace? We just took every counter spell in the draft pod. Uh, I'm really, really disappointed with my decisions this game. Not really the gameplay decisions, but the mulligan decisions. This would have been such a great matchup if I had just mulliganed into aggro. Instead of having to wait to like turn five. But just like a reasonable five card hand would have ended this game centuries ago. But now it looks like we are getting domed. Yep, as the slow, grindy control decks can do in the late game. We are now dead to like anything. Even if I find removal for Crackling Drake, Blade Juggler puts me to two and I'm dead to the sprite. That's not gonna do it. All right, super rough ending there. Um, yeah, that was a matchup where just any good or even average hand just goes to town and destroys this kind of deck. So we just needed to mulligan way more aggressively than we did. We kept a hand that didn't do anything until turn five so we just gave them so much time to set up and even then things went really slow where we were still trying to crawl back into it but yeah that was uh that was on me there we definitely should have mulliganed more and started things aggro and we wouldn't have had to worry about half of those bomb rares slamming down late game the rail or the crackling drake i guess crackling drake isn't technically a rare but it, it feels like it. it is a premium uncommon See, this, this opening hand wins last game every single time, even if I play like an absolute doofus. This is a snap keep. I think I want to get a homicide investigator down before I trade things off, because I'm a greedy man. I guess the issue with that is that we are playing against white, so any removal they have from white will be exile, most likely, or pacify. Either of those doesn't work against the investigator, or does, depending on what side of the table you're on. For them, they'd be like, yeah, this removal works great against investigator, and for me, I'm just gonna be like, no, <laughs> that's so bad for me and my investigator. Do I really mind trading investigator into a face down honestly i don't think i do okay and if they don't take the trade we get to blade juggler for the turn which is just insane value if we just trade even into a territorial war we're up two cards even if i trade down into a two drop with my three drop that is so fine snap block Okay. Now they've got four mana to flip. Shouldn't be anything big enough to kill a 2-2 still, unless they have a combat trick. We don't have any instants in hand to make this any better for us. I could haste out a Burning Tree Vandal, discard a Mountain, play a Gruel Guild Gate. It's a line. Also just play Bodyguard for the turn. I think I'm going to just send an Investigator play Bodyguard for the turn.
and bodyguard can work no matter what next turn even if they kill investigator we can haste out a burning tree vandal oh that's a nightmare bomb rare that spits out multiple other creatures so even if i kill it immediately they still get multiple bodies off of it that's pretty good so we have the deadly complication tristani to get rid of all their plus one plus one they still have a two two and two one ones on board they could block either of these with uh two two and a one one that's probably a favorable trade if they do and i can also just play red herring and trading that into both of the one ones or the face down is also a favorable trade Take it all, go to eight. Is this face down also a lifelinker? That would not be good. Okay, hold up blocks. They're ready to flip the face down into randomly killing something. Okay. They're at eight life. Got a blade juggler to dead revels up. We probably send in everybody and then dead revels whatever gets killed by this. Just keep the pressure on. If that's a vengeful creeper, that's going to be awful. Ah, uh, because it kills the red herring too. That's frustrating. I could crack it and draw a card right now. Oh, this only triggers once each turn. Oh no, so I'm gonna get one clue this turn also. So if I don't crack it right now, I don't get the card draw off of it. Right, because then I just get one clue this turn. If I crack it, then I draw a card off of Red Herring and have a clue left over. I don't, I think I can't afford to spend mana on that when I need to be committing to the board still. Although I also need to be digging for removal against a 5-5 five, five at this point. Oh, that is rough. I don't think I crack it. I think we save the mana. So they kill the investigator, take three, sure. Killer Among Us is pretty great. There's a giant blocker from our opponent. Bold attack as well. Go for it. Six mana now. Now we need to find removal for the 7-7, seven, seven, but I can cast a Vengeful Creeper to trade into their Vengeful Creeper. Six mana. If I cast Killer Among Us, it's the only spell for the turn. Alternatively, we can go Vandal and Face Down Creeper, but there's no artifacts or enchantments to blow up with the Face Down Creeper right now anyway. I could go Investigator, Shaman, and crack a clue. My blocks aren't particularly great. They're a little better if I go Vandal, Face Down, Creeper. Or Vandal, Investigator, even. I do want to play a Face Up, Creeper, later. Yeah. We needed them to be running out of cards, and deduce means they are definitely not running out of cards. The Sumala Sentry. Titanic Brawl. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with the decision not to crack the fish, because we have so many clue tokens here that we just do not have the time to spend mana on.
five, six, seven. Human is the killer. The siege worm that's very big. Seven, I have eight mana. I can vengeful creeper crack a clue still. Find a trumpeter. Play the trumpeter and still crack another clue. Yeah. Actually, play the trumpeter and crack all the clues. Oh, not like that. Auto tapper. Uh, I would draw cornered crook when I sacrifice the very last artifact I have. That's annoying. Right, we put that in here for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> well, I completely forgot we even had that in the deck at this point. I was like, we're in this position. I'm going to have to start doing so much math to figure out when we can actually lethal through two lifelinking chumps and all these big blocks. Because if we crack in and we don't find lethal, we're in a pretty bad spot where they've killed a lot of our creatures for free. And they have big crackbacks to maybe even kill us at 11 here. Um, Cosmotronic Wave just uh, shuts off the reasons to do any math. We just kill them. They just can't block. And that will end that game. We are now 5 and 1 in the money out of this draft. Whatever happens from here. But see how much farther we take it as we head into game number 7. Alright, here we are for game seven. We're technically starting on turn three. We have to play Shaman turn three, Juggler turn four. But I think that's still decent. Our opponent starts with Twilight Panther, little death touching blocker, kills whatever size creature it wants later. Into Repeat Offender, so they are getting aggressive on the play. Which is not good for us. Because we do not get to start till turn three. Oh my god. Well, we might just get mega bombed from Murders at Carlisle Manor. Wojak Investigators here, which is going to give them a clue every turn because their hand was a lot cheaper than ours and they were on the play, which means they didn't draw a card during their first turn to make it even easier to have less cards in hand than us to keep getting those clue tokens. is devastating. Yep, now they just suspect the repeat offender, so I can't block anybody. It just looks like a free win for our opponent at this point. I don't think there's really any coming back from this 1-2-3 curve. We don't have anything to kill the flyer. We're already down to 11. We'd still have a pretty reasonable shot here if we were on the play. But this looks unwinnable on the draw. Investigator alone killing us from here. And even if it doesn't kill us, gives him so many cards still. And there's more flyers and no removal from our deck. Well... Person of interest can't block anyway, so we might as well spectacle our blade juggler off of that. See if we can hit galvanize, which would kill the investigator. Nope. Hit nothing, and they still get more clues. Oh, 
only way to draw another card here is for them to kill Blade Juggler somehow. And that is the only way to maybe not die. Even the best card in our deck, though, doesn't kill both the Flyers, so we do still die. Even if I do get to draw another Blade Juggler card here. If they do that, that's the only way we have a chance here, because then we kill both their Flyers. Oh, no, we don't. They have Silent Dart. Does that cost four? That costs four. They don't have Silent Dart. They need something in their hand to kill Blade Juggler in response. Otherwise, we kill Investigator, draw a card, and if it's removal for the bats, we've killed all their flying. Although I do still die at two life against the Menace. Well, that would be really depressing if I hit the removal and I still die. Well... I guess on the plus side, we didn't hit the removal, so pretty easy loss here no matter what, then. That was almost the hard throw from our opponent, though. Almost. But... Even if we had hit the removal, we only would have had two blockers up at that point. Um, and because of their menace on repeat defender, we would still just be dead at that point in the game. Yeah. Not much to say there, just a really disappointing one. They just played... They curved out insanely on the play with an incredible bomb rare from Murders at Call of Manor. And just rode that all the way to victory. The double flyer when we drew none of the removal in our deck... Can't do much about that. We are now 5 and 2, heading into game number 8. Here we are for game 8. This is kind of a forced mulligan here. Cosmotronic Wave doesn't do anything to like turn 10 onwards. We don't have any cheap creatures to spectacle this Blade Juggler out, so we're not actually playing anything till turn 4. And if we don't draw lands, we're not playing anything, period, because we don't have the 3 or 4 lands to get to Juggler in person. Oh no. This is all black spells, no black source. We are on the draw here, but there's literally nothing castable, so we gotta go to five. And kinda have to stop mulliganing at that point. Bodyguard into person of interest is interesting. Ah, this hand would be spicy if I didn't have to mulligan. <laughs> But having to ditch two of these cards means we're having issues here. Because Deadly Complication is really good with Person of Interest. So I kind of need to keep both of these. Wojak Bodyguard's really good with Person of Interest. So I kind of want to keep that too. But then that involves putting a land in a burning tree. Ditching these, which means if I don't draw lands, we're not even playing anything. And turn three, we're not attacking or blocking with Bodyguard. We're not doing that till like turn five or something, so I kind of think I have to get rid of bodyguard, so I'm actually actively doing something starting turn three. Plus, we have the upside of the Burning Tree Vandal if we make it to the third land, letting us ditch some extra spells we've drawn into if we get mana screwed and we draw exclusively spells. So, like, I want the bodyguard person of interest combo pretty badly, but I don't think I can afford to keep it here because the Vandal just helps so much uh, if we get stuck on mana. And we certainly can't go down to one land here. We can't ditch another land to keep bodyguards. So I think this is basically the only option. All right, well, there's our first discard for the Vandal. That is uh, instantly going in our graveyard the moment I can. Playing against a Golgari, and they are on the play. Oh, not like this. We're already down two cards from a double mulligan, and they have Unscrupulous Agent. Well, there goes Dowser then. Guess we're not discarding it to Vandal, which means we're not discarding anything to Vandal, because these other two cards are pretty important, which means I do have the time to play it as a 3-2, so it can actually attack into Unscrupulous Agent, so at least there's that. At least I don't really want to haste attack with it here, in which case I'd be very sad about it trading down into Agent.
Land four? I don't think I can ditch that. So I think we're just attacking with Burning Tree Vandal and the trade into Eavesdropper is not bad because I don't really have extra stuff to be able to discard here. Yeah, that's not a bad trade for me. It's not a good trade because it did already give them a clue. Okay, this card's literally unbeatable, isn't it? Yep, pay for life, give it indestructible. So I literally can't kill it, so I can't attack into it, I can't removal spell it, I can't do anything. They do have to lose a lot of life every time they do that. But they get to draw the best card of the top three every turn. I mean, I think I can just concede and move on to the next draft, honestly. But we've got Immolation Shaman on board alongside that, so it costs them 5 life every time they want to do it. So it's going to cost them 5 life. And it will be tapped for the turn. So we get big damage in here. And cracking the clue costs them another life. We leave the person of interest suspected here, so they can't block it. And then Immolation Shaman can be large and menacey. This is our one route to victory here. It's just full speed ahead, all damage, kill them within a turn or two. If they have any good defensive plays lined up, it's not going to work, and Affectionate Indrik is an incredible defensive play. A 4-4 blocker that kills one of our creatures when it enters the battlefield. And a forest is a horrific offensive play. I could attack with person of interest to deal four to them because they double block it and then give Lich unblockable, or not unblockable, indestructible. What do I have for direct damage in this deck? Not enough. Could find Cosmotronic Wave. That's kind of it. The longer I wait the more this Underrealm Lich just takes the game from us, because again, they're drawing the best card from the top three every turn. They're not drawing blind. Just gotta full aggro it out. We deal a lot of damage if they try to kill Person of Interest if I attack with both of these. Okay. So we deal a lot of damage. Oh, well, they let the Lich die. All right. That is very smart from them. That kind of just solidifies that now they're super fine. Oh, they had a Glint Weaver too to gain seven. You got me. And we just have lands. All right, I'm moving on. We cannot come back from there. They have a 7-7, seven, seven, a 3-3, three, three, and an extra card on board. We have a 2-2 two, two in all lands, and they have more cards in their hand we don't know about. So 5-3 and three it is. Uh, I think the biggest flaw of the deck, honestly, is the splash. I don't think it was really worth it, especially Public Thoroughfare made a lot of the hands even worse, being so slow, requiring us to tap two lands the turn we play at both the Thoroughfare and another land we control. So Thoroughfare looked really bad in a lot of our hands, um, but we were forced into a lot of mulligans here, and a lot of that was involving this splash. I think if we just kept it more streamlined and pure Rakdos here, over going for this splash, like cut those two for just the Acrobat, maybe an Active Treason or a Severed Strands for like a finisher or a way to clear out a blocker, um, that could have been the difference and, and got us to a 7-win run. I think that was the big thing to learn here was this deck was good enough in just two colors we should have kept it streamlined because we were very very punished for this splash um where basically all three of our losses were some rough mulligans some rough draws really slow hands awkward mana stuff like that so if the deck was just more streamlined from the get-go those kind of hands would be much less likely and we probably could have been able to aggro out at least one of those three losses so yeah 
sweet run from the deck still. Five and three is great. That's still up in value, getting more gems out of the event than we paid to get in. But I would have liked to uh, see the deck do a little better. I think it was capable of doing it had we built the deck a little better, had we built it a little differently here. And potentially had I made better mulligan decisions more than anything, uh, there was that one game that I think we definitely could have won with a, a quicker hand, so... A little bit of uh, self-imposed losses here, as always, but I feel like it was less uh, due to gameplay decisions specifically and more of like right before the game decisions like deck construction and mulligans uh, that could be changed here. Either way, still a great run and still a great draft. But that is going to end today's video. As always, I'd like to thank my patrons and YouTube members for their support, as well as you for watching the video. If you enjoyed this video and are interested in seeing some more, you can always like, comment, and subscribe to tell the YouTube algorithm to send you some more in your recommended feed. If you'd like to catch me live, you can check out the Twitch channel in the link in the description below, where I'm live every Wednesday. And if you'd like to support the channel directly, you can check out the Patreon link in the description below. But other than that, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon for some more Magic Arena.